Do you want to make millions of FIFA coins every single month? Do you want the buying and selling prices for every single card on this game that is profitable to help you build the best ultimate team? If you do, head over to Foot Trading for as low as £10.99 a month. You will never need to spend a single penny on FIFA points whatsoever. We guarantee you'll make millions of coins. But also, you'll be able to enter the brand new Foot Trading Foot League. Here it is. It's amazing. It enables you to play against other people on the site in a promotion relegation system. Everybody plays for prizes no matter what league you're in. Um, it's going to be absolutely incredible. It's going to completely change the game. Never need to rely upon EA's content again. Check out the website. But for now, let's get into the video. Yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to a brand new video with me, Fuzzball40. As always, if you're new around here, make sure you subscribe down below and make sure your notification turn on so you never miss an upload. Do not forget, check out foottrading.co.uk if you guys want to get involved in our free tournament. You're welcome to do so. Or if you want to subscribe there for buying and selling prices to every card on this game, you can enter the subscriber tournament, which means you haven't even got to qualify and you're immediately playing for prizes and a chance to play against other content creators. Check it out. But let's talk about FIFA 22. And basically, to put it mildly, FIFA 21, 22 have been the most popular titles for FIFA and EA Sports ever. And that is a bad, bad thing. Anybody that has been around um, FIFA for a long time will know that as time's gone on, in my opinion, and in most people's opinion, the quality of the game has got worse. It's really become about making money as much as possible with things like continual SBCs, continual promos. Um, and because of that, things like Team of the Weeks, just not even a thing anymore. I rarely see Team of the Weeks in people's teams. Just promo cards, promo cards, promo cards. And the fact that more and more people are playing it is why it's getting worse and worse and worse. It makes very little sense, but I'll explain it in a minute. But I want to give you some facts and figures um, over on the internet, and I want to show you why this year was probably the year that EA went too far. I'll bring it back. All right, guys. So um, this article here, um, Forbes, a uh, really reputable article, um, basically sort of talks about what EA made in the third quarter of the fiscal year 21-22. Um, and basically, it was the biggest ever quarter for them, and that was coinciding with the release of FIFA 22, um, which, is, which is massive, basically. In that time, the, the, the basic amount they made was 2.57 billion, okay? Net revenue, 1.7 billion. It's absolutely massive, okay? Net income was down, but there was reasons for that. There was things such as investment or whatever it is. We are talking astronomical figures, okay? Astronomical figures. Now, I want to just quickly point out something to you guys. A lot of people this year have said um, that for this year and last year, there seems a lot less of a player base for, for FIFA, I want to just point out something in terms of stats, okay? So, 140 million people engaged with EA Sports games in the previous 12 months, okay? 31 million players joined FIFA 21 itself on console and PC since launch, okay? And FIFA Ultimate Team matches are up 48% year over year for the quarter. 50% nearly more games being played on Ultimate Team. That is incredible, it is absolutely incredible. But for those of us that have been around for the Ultimate Team for as long as we can remember, that's a bad, bad thing. Because when you see people playing the game more and more and more, it makes it seem as if that game is very good, it's on point, it's as it should be. And sometimes people will say, yep, yeah, that is true. In my opinion, and in many people's opinion, it's not. The reason why FIFA is doing so well is purely because there is zero competitor for them. eFootball is nowhere near a competitor yet. Um, it never has been, in fact, it's paid for a long, long time. If you want your fix of football, soccer, whatever you call it, wherever you are from, you need to play FIFA, basically. What EA have done, and it's, it's a fact, is they've systematically underfunded or underdeveloped other parts of the game. Career mode doesn't really get much love. Pro clubs doesn't get that much love. Volta, no one really cares about. All of EA's thought process goes into the ultimate team model, okay? All into the ultimate team model. And this year we, in my opinion, has taken the biscuit. What we have seen this year is promo after promo with unbelievably overpowered cards. Cards that are basically endgame cards midway through the game consistently throughout promos. That Bellingham card at Future Stars that basically is as good as any centre mid you're ever going to see in Tots. It's just way too much. And what has it meant? It's meant that they've made more money. Why is that? Because players on FIFA are worth a lot less this year than they were last year. Neymar Jr. this year, you can get him for 46 million coins, 46,000 coins the day that I'm recording this, which is the 4th 
of May, okay? So I can just get the current date here. Current date. Wednesday, 4th of May, okay? 2022. I'm recording this. I need 46,000 coins on the market. That is one of the best gold cards on this game. If we have a little look, Neymar on the 4th of May last year was 132k on Xbox. Um, and on PlayStation, 227,000 coins. Almost three times the price. So if you packed Neymar, you got 132,000 on Xbox, 227 and 258 on PC, okay? If we have a little look at Cristiano Ronaldo this year. Let's have a little look at Cristiano Ronaldo. His 91 rated card. 74,000 coins across both consoles, okay? 74,000 coins. If we look at FIFA 21... Admittedly, one rating higher. He was 93,000 coins and 90,000 coins now. Let's just get it up and, and work out the exact date. So if I go to 2021, and if I go to May, we'll do May the 1st, all the way to like, just make it so it's easier for me to see it. Uh, May the 10th. At that time of the year, Ronaldo was 194,000 coins on Xbox, 282 on PlayStation, and 398 on PC, okay? If you were to pack Ronaldo today, you would get 74,000 coins, okay? Again, that is what? Less than half, about two and a half times less than what he cost last year. And the reason for this is there are just so many better options on this game. And it means that when you buy and sell your teams, you end up losing coins quite significantly and quite often. The price of cards comes down very, very quickly because you can go and buy yourself Jonathan Bamber's card and literally a week later, a brand new left mid French player has come out and makes it even more, it makes it even more sort of uh, saturated in the market and just brings the price down because there's so much choice of player. And it just keeps dropping it down. However, the topper end and the higher end are very, very expensive. There's so many cards. Gravenbirch, for example, from this Tots. You look at this Gravenbirch card, and because there's so many high, high cards, 1.4 million coins to this card. But the drop rate on these cards is so, so slim and so, so small that really it doesn't matter because you're not going to pack this Gravenbirch realistically. You're going to pack someone else. And the more coins you lose, the worse your sort of financial state is in the game. What do you do? You open more packs. And it makes EA more and more money. And that is the problem. That is the issue with the game becoming more popular. It's a bad thing. It's a horrendous thing. And as time goes on, and as time progresses, the more people that play FIFA, the worse it gets. And I'm not, being a, I'm not trying to be pessimistic or trying to, trying to be a bell end here or whatever. But if you look at this year's game... We all started off like very positive about it and slowly but surely it's been negative. And what we've seen again, as we always do with, um, with EA and with FIFA and whatever, is a pure lack of any real engagement. Any real engagement. So cross play test or whatever, which is massive by the way, we'll talk about that at some point. Um, but any real engagement, just loads of problems. And if you look through here, investigating this year on the 27th, okay? Issue's been addressed. We investigate reports of players not been able to on the exact same day. Another issue, okay? 22nd, we get, investigate reports of players been unable to open 15. But it's just problem after problem after problem. But I don't care. You don't care at all, like realistically. And I don't blame them because they're making more money than ever. They're making more and more and more year on year on year. And it's just a ridiculous amount of money being made by this company. So they have no reason to go out and improve the game. So... How does this change? I genuinely don't know because I'm not going to suddenly stop playing this game. You're not going to suddenly stop playing this game. No one is. No one's going to suddenly stop playing this game because there is no alternative out there. And they know that. It's why they've walked away from negotiations about the FIFA name. It's why we don't see any development of the game year on year. It just doesn't work. And something needs to change. But honestly, I don't think anyone can tell you what. I don't think anyone can tell you how you change this game and how you fix it to make it better for players. Servers might be enough to start to improve it, but I think the gameplay needs to change. I don't think, as a company, EA have grasped like how football works, I'm not going to lie. But, like I say, the more people that play FIFA, the worse it gets. It's as simple as that. If you're new around here, make sure you subscribe down below. Make sure your notifications are turned on so you never miss an upload. But for now, I'm out. Peace out. I'll speak to you soon.